we are going to take a look at how to multiply fractions. We are first going to start with some bar modeling. So we have been working on shading to model fractions, but we also have to be able to read what fractions are being modeled. So in this first example, you can see that the larger square is split down the middle in half, and that half of the section with the diagonal lines is shaded. That tells us that our first fraction is one half. I then am going to look to see I have horizontal lines, one, two, three, four lines that are splitting the square into five sections. One, two, three, four, five sections. So I know the denominator on my second fraction is five and three one, two, three out of the five sections going horizontally are shaded in or marked with the dots. So that fraction is going to be three-fifths. To find that product, I'm going to multiply the two numerators together, which is three, and then multiply the two denominators together, two times five, which is ten. You can see that in this figure, three out of the total ten rectangles are overlapped by the dots and by the diagonal lines. In our next example, we can see that I have the square split into three sections horizontally. One, two, three. And you can see that two of those are marked in with the dots. So my first fraction for that would be two thirds times. Then I can see my vertical lines have it split into five sections. One, two, three, four, five. Four of the sections are marked with the diagonal lines, so my second fraction is four out of five. If you go back to the square, you can count that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen smaller rectangles. So that means my denominator is fifteen, which is three times five. And I have a total of one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight of those are overlapping with the dots and the diagonals. So that shows me that the fraction or my product is 8 fifteenths. As we look into multiplying fractions and mixed numbers, I want to review some vocabulary with you. When you have a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, this fraction is called a proper fraction a proper fraction. The top number in our fraction is called the numerator, N-U-M-E-R-A-T-O-R, -E and the bottom number of my fraction is called the denominator. So the top number is the numerator, the bottom number is the denominator. As I look at my fraction two and two thirds, two and two thirds is what we call a mixed number. A mixed number. The reason it is a mixed number is because I have a whole number. In this case, two is my whole number and also a fraction two-thirds. So altogether, we call that a mixed number. When the numerator, in this case seven, is larger than the denominator, we call this type of fraction a improper fraction. Improper fraction. So we have three types of fractions. A proper fraction, a mixed number, and an improper fraction. Now let's take a look at multiplying fractions. 
when I am multiplying two fractions together, I have to first look to see if I have any mixed numbers. In example A, I have the fraction 1 half, which is a proper fraction. 2 and a half is a mixed number. As it says on your sheet, if you have a mixed number, you need to change it into an improper fraction before you multiply. 2, the denominator, times the whole number. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then I have to take that number and add it to the numerator. 4 plus 1 is 5. That number now becomes the numerator, and your denominator stays the same as what you had. When I multiply, I'm going to multiply the two numerators together. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 2 is 4. I can rewrite 5 fourths as a mixed number, and that would be 1 and 1 fourth, which is my product. In example B, both fractions are mixed numbers. I first must change them to improper fractions. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. So I have 11 over 5 times 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. So my improper fraction is 25 eighths. The other thing we have to look at is can I use the greatest common factor to reduce the numbers on the diagonal of the fraction? So when I mean diagonal, in this case I'm talking about 5 and 25. I can divide 5 and 25 by the greatest common factor of 5, and then I need to change the fraction. So I like to say 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I cross off what I had, and I put a 1, and I like to circle it to kind of keep track of it that it's my new denominator. Then I have to divide 25 by 5, which is 5. So I cross that off, I write 5, and I circle it. I would also encourage you to rewrite the fraction. So my new fractions are 11 over 1 times 5 over 8. And when you multiply, you have 55 over 8. I apologize I ran out of room here. So I can leave it like that as it is in simplest form, or I can rewrite it as a mixed number. 8 goes into 55 um, 6 times, and 8 times 6 is 48. The difference between 55 and 48 is 7, so 7 is my numerator, and my denominator stays as 8. So I have 6 and 7 eighths. On the last example, 5 and 1 third is a mixed number. I need to change it to an improper fraction. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. So I have 16 over 3 times. And if you notice here, I have 9. 9 is a whole number. The denominator of any whole number is 1. So I am going to write this as 9 over 1, because 9 divided by 1 would simplify to 9. So my second fraction is 9 over 1. Again, I need to look to see if I can cross-reduce on the diagonals. 16 and 1, the greatest common factor is 1, so that is already simplified. On my other diagonal, I have 3 and 9. The greatest common factor of 3 and 9 is 3, so I have to divide both of those, those by 3 and rechange the fraction. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I'm going to rewrite my fraction, so now I have 16 over 1 times 3 over 1. 16 times 3 is 48. 1 times 1 is 1. And since I have 48 divided by 1, I am going to make that equal the whole number of 48.